that standard is God's word. And we wanna measure everything by that. And it, look, at if I have made a, a mistake in my understanding of scripture, what I want someone to do is take me to scripture and show me here's where you went wrong. And I think that's the only way that this works. Tim, Mr. B is not the standard for what's true and what's false. No, God's word is. Tim, a lot of your work focuses on correcting bad ideas mm -hmm. that twist scripture into meaning things that it doesn't mean. Yeah. There's so many people speaking for God, no wonder it's hard for people to yeah. discern his voice. And then even within the body of Christ, you have so many different denominations and people with mm. different theologies. One question I've always had is, why doesn't the Holy Spirit lay out unity <clears throat> for everybody so yeah. that we can just say, okay, who's on the good side, who's on the bad side? Pick your yeah. team and let's fight it out. Yeah. Uh, instead, there seems to be confusion even within the yeah. body of Christ. It, have you ever made sense of that? It's, this is a good question and I'm with you. I wish it was easier. I wish the Holy Spirit would just kind of download all the correct views into my, into my brain, you know, that kind of thing. But that, that's not how God has set things up. Um, we have to, like the Bereans, right? Search the scriptures to see if these things be so. And so it's not that God has left us without a witness. No, he, is, he has communicated to us. He has communicated through his word. Now, sometimes when uh, we read God's word, things can be tricky, you know? We gotta understand the context. We often see people pulling verses out of context. And so one of the things we do with Red Pen is we go back, hey, let's just read these verses in context to see um, what it's really saying. But you're right, there's, there's um, lots of instances where Christians, well-meaning, disagree on certain issues. And here's where we ought to, you know, put first things first, the Bible talks about, say, the gospel. That's a, first, a matter of first importance, Paul says in 1 Corinthians mm. 15, right? So on a gospel issue, hey, we got to get this squared out, squared away. But when it comes to, say, secondary issues, tertiary issues, as Christians, we can disagree on those issues and do so in a loving and respectful way. Now, of course, I'm not saying all views are correct. No, there's a correct view. I'm sure I'm mistaken on some of my views. I just don't know which views I'm mistaken about so I can change my views, right? So we, we ought to, again, let's go back to scripture and see if we can come to a correct understanding. So really, I hear you saying that at the, at the base of your ability to correct anyone's theology, you've got to come back to the Bible. You've got yeah. to come back to the true word of God. Yeah. Without that, um, red pen logic uh, needs to be red pen. That's right. By the truth. That's right. And so we, that's right. There is a standard that's out there and that standard is God's word. And we want to measure everything by that. And it, look, at if I have made a, a mistake in my understanding of scripture, what I want someone to do is take me to scripture and show me here's where you went wrong. And I think that's the only way that this works. Tim, Mr. B is not the standard for what's true and what's false. No, God's word is, or reality is. And, and sometimes when we go to red pen something, we're not necessarily citing a scripture verse. We're citing reality. So when someone makes a claim that life doesn't begin at conception, we don't know when life begins. We can go to science and, and show scientifically that life begins at conception. So there I'm using just the facts of reality as my standard um, and, and, and looking at, hey, here's what's true by just looking at the world. How do you discern the difference between uh, someone who's just trying to figure it out mm -hmm. and so you don't want to jump on them with your big yeah. red pen, yeah. uh, you want to encourage them and you understand that they need to mature in their faith and grow in their yeah. understanding of things. Mm. Uh, and seeing that someone's incorrect theology is actually dangerous. Yeah, this, this is really difficult, especially in a tweet because there isn't a lot of content there, right? So you end up, um, 
I, I, I'm a little cautious. I will assume the person is being genuine when I don't know. Now, sometimes it's real clear. This person is, is not sincere in their challenge. You know, they're, they're making claims or, or asking questions that they're really not looking for an answer to. They're just trying to maybe even mock Christians or mock the Christian worldview. In those cases, again, I don't want to exchange blow for blow with mocking. You know, what I want to do is take the high road. I want to say, let's push that, all the ad hominems to the side. Look, you can make fun of me. There's lots of things to make fun of Mr. B about. You know, no hair, whatever, skinny. Go for it. Take shots at, take shots at Tim. Let's talk about the ideas, though. I'm always trying to get back to what is the idea. Um, so in those situations, the best way is often to ignore the attack. Sometimes point it out. Hey, I'm in a discussion with someone and they clearly don't seem to be sincere and I may just ask them straight, straight up. So do you really want an answer to this question? I mean, you've probably been in situations where you're talking with someone and they're asking, you know, where's the evidence for God? And you're wondering, do they really want me to lay out a case for God? Or are they just, am I going to say- They're just looking to trip you up. That's right. They're waiting for you to stop talking so that they can jump all over you, you know? So they want a monologue. And there's been times where I've done this, where I've said, look, it look you don't want a dialogue. You want a monologue. So I'll tell you what, I'll sit here and listen. Here's, you know, I'll, we'll spend the next five, 10 minutes and you just tell me what you believe and why you believe it. I'll listen. You clearly don't want to hear from me, you know, in how you're behaving or how you're responding. Um, but there's many times there are people that are sincere and they want a sincere answer. And so I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to give a clear, as clearly as I can response to, to what they're saying. So sometimes there are people who are um, incorrect in, mm -hmm. in what they're believing, but again, they're just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are some people who have beliefs that are really dangerous to their faith yeah. and maybe they're influencing other people and it's dangerous to the people who are hearing from yeah. them. So uh, how do you know when someone's bad theology is actually dangerous for them? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And, and this, those are typically the videos that we, we respond to. We watch a TikTok video and someone gets up in front of you know, their phone or whatever, and they are making a claim that is counter to scripture, but not just in like, not on some issue that Christians you know, debate over, but like a serious moral issue or um, an issue that you know, puts you outside the pale of Christianity, you know, a heretical position. Okay, now it's time to take this thing on um, and, and do so in a way, again, that's gracious, but those are the issues we wanna be responding to because look at that idea and, and your listeners will know that when, when a video gets posted on TikTok, some of these things reach hundreds of thousands and millions of people and those ideas spread like a virus and people come to believe them. And so someone says, hey, the Bible actually um, you know, doesn't speak on abortion, that issue, it doesn't talk about that issue, or it doesn't speak about homosexuality or whatever. And then that begins to take on a life of its own and people end up believing that. We wanna, we wanna come in and say, no, no, we, there's, a, there's a response to this. You need to know this and, and this is the kind of thing that you need to know so that in the case of abortion, hey, maybe we can save lives because when we change minds, we save lives. In, in other cases, hey, there's people who are engaging in sinful behavior and they don't even know their behavior is sinful because they were told by someone, you know, wearing a, um, you know, the priest's outfit or someone who looks like a pastor or something or calling themselves a pastor yeah. says, don't worry, you can engage in this. God doesn't worry, God doesn't care about that. Go ahead, live your own truth. And so we want to respond to the person, not only so that the person is corrected, but also all the people who like and follow yeah. and all those other things um, are able to hear the truth as well.